Hello everyone. In the last video we have derived this approach of basically identifying or representing a linear model with the outputs y, the so-called regressor, so the data inputs I have, and the weights w. And in this lecture we are going to discuss how we can basically define a proper identification problem out of this model approach. First of all, in order to make things a little bit shorter, I'm introducing a new variable here or a new dimension, which I called Q. And Q is just in the following our general dimension variable in order to showcase how many parameters we have, which in this case is identical to small n and m, because we have up to n states from our state space model and up to m inputs. And if we add n and m together, we have this Q number of regressors per measurement or Q parameters. One question we need to answer is actually how many measurement points do we want to obtain before we set up our least squares problem. So we have capital N measurement points, so these are the number of rows we have and in total Q parameters. So therefore, at least we would need to ensure that n equals q such that we have enough independent lines of this linear uh, model here in order to identify all q parameters. However, it makes sense to even take more measurements m than parameters q because normally what we have is we have also some noise which I denote as nu, nu1 until mu n, so that is a noise vector, normally coming from some random process, so some measurement noise, which we cannot model, so it's uh, basically an additive term which will be not part of our linear model, so that's why I put it here into parentheses. But of course we will assume in the following, and we'll also discuss the impacts, that this measurement noise will influence the outputs y, which we can measure at the output of our system. And due to this measurement noise, it makes sense to obtain more capital M than Q samples in order to compensate for noise impacts over time and trying to identify a model which is not so heavily impacted by this output noise. However, we will obtain some parameters and discuss uh, the properties of noise on the model identification results later on in separate videos. For now, it is basically just our motivation to assume that the number of samples, capital N, is significantly larger than the number of parameters I want to identify small q and that's why this linear problem which we uh, basically state here is equivalent to an overdetermined linear equation system. Right, so that's why we cannot directly solve for Q because if that is not a square matrix, if N is significantly larger than Q, then we cannot calculate the inverse here and we would solve this for a uh, perfectly determinant li linear equation system, but that's not possible. So therefore we need to come up with another approach which we can discuss in the following. And this approach which we do here is the least squares approach. Least squares. What does that mean? That basically means that if we have our model, let's say our model would be some like linear relation between inputs and outputs, let's call that small z and that y, and we have measurements, something like this here, measurement points along this system model, then the least squares approach basically tells us that we want to minimize the sum of the squared residuals between measurements and this linear model which we have. And formally, that means that we're interested in finding the parameter vector w 
which is identical to arc min with respect to w of capital Y minus Z times W, right? So that would be our model error. Y are the different measurement points, our outputs. And Z times omega, this is our model prediction. That would be here my uh, linear model, which I basically assume in this cartoonic example. And in order to uh, represent the sum of the quadratic residuals, we take the two norm, the Euclidean norm, and also consider here the square to add up the squared residuals over all measurement points. Or if we want to represent this as a, yeah, let's say direct linear algebra term, we can also rephrase this as y minus z w transpose, right? So this will be a vector, the residual vector times y minus z times w without any transpose. And then this will be um, a row vector, this will be a column vector, and if we get a scalar from this, this is our so-called cost function, which we can then minimize. So therefore, in the next video, we will see how we can formally solve this least squares problem, how we can find a parameter uh, vector w, which will minimize this cost function, this loss function here, in the case that we have an overdeterminate linear equation system where we have much more data samples than parameters. Thank you.